When it comes to the game of Big Brother, there has always been one important rule that has mattered more than anything else. Don't get voted out. In a game all about being the last player standing, you have to do whatever it takes to survive. And throughout the first 24 seasons of the show, we saw 24 players navigate their way through the game until they eventually earned the crown, all without being voted out. But not this time. You see, every now and then, Big Brother introduces a twist that allows an evicted house guest to come back into the game with a second chance at life. 15 times has a player been voted out and allowed to return to the game, but all 15 times that player has failed to achieve victory. Up until now. Big Brother 25 introduced us to a player who started the game off on the right foot, but the rug was quickly pulled out from under them, leading to a dire first few weeks that ended in their early demise. That could have been it the end to their story, but as luck would have it, they were presented with a gift, a second shot at the game. With this new lease on life, we watched as this player rebounded and fought like never before, breaking record after record as they physically dominated their way through the rest of the game, all culminating in a shocking decision and a historic win. It was one of the most twisted, tumultuous, and abnormal roads to victory ever, so if this seems extra chaotic, that's why. Consider subscribing if you're new here, and without further ado, this is the story of how Jag Baines won Big Brother 25. I'm Jag, I'm 25, and I'm from OMAC, Washington. For $750,000, I think I can throw my morals out the window for a split second and stab someone in the back if I need to. If I come back week one, you're not allowed to help. Jag Baines was an outgoing 25-year-old from OMAC, Washington, where he was the owner of a truck company. Jag was a fan of Big Brother, saying it was his dream to play the game, and with his appearance on the season, Jag became the first ever sick house guest in the U.S., and Jag shared how important it was for him to represent the Sikh community while on the show. It's important for me to represent the Sikh community on Big Brother because there's never been a Sikh before on Big Brother, period. His initial strategy coming into the house was to be a very loyal ally to those he trusted the most and to try and come across as sort of a fun airhead while masking the fact that he was actually quite smart. Having an initial strategy is great, but putting it into practice is a whole different story. So let's jump right into night one and see how this journey officially begins. So I'm a secret genius, none of these house guests will see it coming, and by the time they realize, they'll only have Julie Chen moon beds to discuss it with. Jag entered the Big Brother house alongside 15 other players, and they were instantly whisked into the backyard and split up into groups of four. Each group of four would compete in a competition, with the loser of each group being automatically nominated for the first week. Jag was on his A-game though, and he actually finished first in his heat, which kept him safe from being an initial nominee, so not a bad start. Upon exiting the backyard, the house guests were greeted by a surprise 17th house guest, that being Sari Fields. For those that don't know, Sari is a reality TV legend, as she is a four-time Survivor player who is often touted as the best player to never win, and she had also just won the Traders earlier that year, so she's the real deal. Unbeknownst to the other players, Sari was actually the mother of house guest Jared, and this dynamic would become a focal point for the strategy in the weeks to come. Anyways, the house guests were given a day to socialize with one another before the first HOH comp took place, and Jag shined here. He instantly bonded with Riley, and it didn't take long before the two made a final two deal together. You're my number one person, right? Yeah. Okay. I got you. Jag is really who I want to stay loyal to. Riley is someone that's loyal, so solidifying this final two with Riley feels really, really great. This connection proved to be a great one for Jag, because wouldn't you know it, the first HOH came down to him and Riley. Jag knew that he was going to be safe with Riley in power, so he threw it to her, officially crowning Riley as the first HOH of the summer. I'm gonna just let Riley be HOH. Having her be the HOH was obviously fantastic for Jag, because since he knew he was safe, he could spend the week focusing on forming relationships and building an alliance structure. Jag instantly hit it off with Blue and also formed solid bonds with many of the other younger players, which led Jag to try and create an Onion Alliance. This was an eight person alliance called Family Style, which consisted of himself, Riley, Blue, Matt, Cameron, Corey, America, and Jared, but it was purposely set up in a way where Jag could create sub-alliances within this eight-person structure so that himself, Riley, and Blue would always be in the core and have the numbers advantage inside the alliance. 
alliance. In theory, creating an onion alliance is a great idea and the optimal way to play the game, but unfortunately, Jag was pretty obvious when putting together this alliance, and some of the players, particularly Corey, became aware that they were towards the bottom, which ruined the effectiveness of this structure and also incentivized Corey to look elsewhere for an alliance. I want to give you a heads up, doll alliance. It's like half the house. Me, you, Riley, Matt, Cameron, Blue, Corey, and America. Got to protect each other. Yeah. On top of this, there was a major issue with Jared being included. Jared obviously informs Sari that the eight-person family-style alliance was forming that she wasn't included in, to which Sari retaliated by creating her own eight-person counter-alliance called the Professors, which included pretty much everyone that wasn't in family-style. And guess who their main target was? Jack. To make matters even worse, Cameron also leaked information about Family Style to Izzy for seemingly no reason, but as luck would have it, this actually ended up not being the worst thing for Jack, because during Cameron's conversation with Izzy, he talked a lot about Riley, and how great Riley was, and all this stuff, which alerted the professors that Riley might actually be the more dangerous player, and that they should probably switch their target from Jack over to her. Obviously, this still isn't great, because Riley was Jack's number one ally, but better her than him. Anyways, it's clear that a war between the two sides was brewing, but no big power moves could really be made yet because of how the first week was structured. Riley, as the HOH, could only choose her nominees from the pool of the four losers of the night one competition, to which she chose Kirsten and Felicia, with Kirsten being the clear house target. Hysum, a member of the professor's side, won the veto and didn't use it, locking the nominees in and allowing everyone to focus on the following week. Luke, a total non-factor in literally everything going on, was expelled from the house on day 8 after saying the n-word, and Kirsten was evicted unanimously later that day. Hello, Jag. Hi, Julie. Please cast your vote to evict. Sadly, I vote to evict Kirsten. By a vote of 13 to 0, Kirsten, you are evicted from the Big Brother house. Jag started off the week hot, forming tight connections with many of the players, and things got even better once his closest ally won the first HOH. Jag also displayed that he had a lot of good ideas and proved to be a very active player, which are admirable qualities and traits that many of the Big Brother greats have, but unfortunately, in execution, it didn't pan out super pretty. Jag made his alliance structure way too obvious to everyone, causing people to defect and try to work their way in with the other side of the house, and it also made Jag the initial target for that other side as he was viewed as the player trying to put everything together. His side of the house was starting to crumble while the opposing side grew stronger, and Jag wasn't really that aware of how much the tide may have been turning against him. He still had tight relationships with Riley and Blue as well as growing bonds with America and Matt, so things weren't all that bad. He just needed the second HOH to go his way. This is my kind of competition. If I can win, I can not only secure my own safety, but I can keep my side of the house and the outgoing HOH Riley safe for the week. Week two kicked off with a really fun HOH comp, but the result didn't turn out very fun for Jag as he lost pretty early on and Hysum ended up winning the HOH. Jag knew right off the bat that his alliance was in danger and he particularly feared for himself and Riley. This is terrible for my alliance and this is terrible for me and Riley. I'm really hoping that Hysum doesn't put me and Riley on the block as a pair. Knowing that someone from Family Style was going to be targeted, Jag and some of his allies tried pitching Corey as the target in an attempt to save themselves, but it was unsuccessful. Hysum's main target was still Riley, and he told her that he was going to put her up, but one more person still had to be nominated. Jag was clearly one of the professor's main targets the prior week, but luckily, two other players had risen above him in terms of being a target. Cameron and Matt, at least for Hysum. So, even though Jag was likely losing an ally this week, he didn't look to be in any immediate danger, and Hysum even told him that he was safe. On top of that, there was an additional twist this week that also impacted the game. Jared placed second in the HOH comp, and because of it, he was taken to a place called the Nether Region, which was basically a pseudo-solitary confinement situation outside of the house. Jared eventually returned to the main house, and it was his job to send another player to the Nether Region. However, this player would miss the nomination ceremony and therefore be given safety for the week. Hysum was terrified that Jared was going to save Riley or one of his backup targets, so he told Jared that he didn't care who he saved as long as it wasn't Riley, Matt, or Cameron. 
Jared had secretly fully defected from family style at this point in favor of working with his mother Sari, but he didn't want to blow his cover and reveal the family style that he wasn't with them. So, given all this information, Jared chose to send Jag to the nether region, guaranteeing his safety for week two. Although Jag was kind of confused as to why Jared didn't save Riley, guaranteed safety was guaranteed safety, and Jag at least got to go the rest of the week without worrying about getting evicted. You know you could send him all look funny? Jag. I choose Jaguar to go to the nether region. I don't know why Jared made that move. I'm already safe with Hysom and Riley needs it way, way more. At the same time, it's nice to know that I'll be here another week. Riley and Cameron ended up being nominated, and Hysom also went on to win the veto, securing that Riley would remain on the block and likely be evicted. Now, throughout the week, armed with his guaranteed safety, Jag continued to try and rebuild and reform his family style alliance, but it was to no real success, and that was mostly due to his approach. He would talk to someone like Sari about forming an alliance, but then in his pitch, he would say things like, yeah, and we can include America, and Blue, and Matt, which made it clear to Sari that she was just being added into an already established group, and that she would be on the outside. So although I do give Jag credit for trying and being active, it wasn't gone about in the best way, which led to the lack of success that he had. Are you sure you got egg rolls? I know for sure, like me, Blue, Matt, Jared, Corey, America. That's the squad that makes sense to me. Mm-hmm. As for the week, Jag pushed for Riley to stay, but it was clear that he just had no power in the house. The vote continued to jump back and forth between Cameron and Riley, but Jag's campaigning really didn't have much of an impact. He simply had no sway. Jag was at the core of a dwindling alliance that had all but jumped ship at this point. Matt was exploring his options. Blue had a blooming connection with Jared that she was leaning on. Corey was fully on Team Sari. The only player that fully remained was Riley, but she was on her way out the door. Riley ended up being evicted in a unanimous vote, meaning that Jag lost his closest ally in the game just two weeks in. Losing your ride or die isn't easy, but Jag was still in a recoverable position. Even though Matt and Blue had other ties in the house, they were still loyal to Jag. He had allies in the game, they just hadn't won anything yet. Right before the vote, we realized the house isn't on Riley's side. And it doesn't sound like we have it. We don't, we don't have them right now. What with the house? Hello, Jag. Hi, Julie. Please cast your vote to evict. With a heavy heart, I vote to evict Riley. By a vote of 12 to zero, Riley. You are evicted from the Big Brother house. I don't even know. I feel like heartbroken, mad that I couldn't do more to save Riley. She was my ride or die, and our plan was to go all the way to the end together. For this HOH, I'm really only gonna feel safe if I win, if Matt wins, if Blue wins. Going into week three, we saw Felicia win the HOH. Initially, this seemed like it was a pretty bad outcome for Jag, as Felicia was on the other side of the house, but there was a different plan in place. When Hysom had all of the power in week two, he acted like a dictator within his alliance, trying to micromanage all of their game actions, and nobody liked that. So, pretty much everyone in the house, regardless of if they were a professor or in family style, were all secretly in agreement that week three's plan was to backdoor Hysom. This was great for Jag, as it meant that he wasn't target number one, but unfortunately, he was target number two. Jag was nominated next to Cameron, and although Hysom was still the main plan, if something wonky happened and Hysom remained safe, then Jag would have been the backup plan to send home. I know everyone's saying they want to backdoor Hysom, but I'm not going to be collateral damage as a part of this plan. I'm going to take this game into my own hands and just win that veto. So going into the veto, Jag needed to win. And guess what? Jag did win the veto. It was a very physical chicken coop themed competition, and he dominated the whole way through, guaranteeing his safety, winning his first veto of the season, and earning the right to wear this chicken suit for the rest of the week. Jag obviously used the veto to save himself, and Heisen was blindsided and named the replacement nominee. I'm gonna take myself off the block. Hysom's gonna get backdoor, baby. I have decided to use the power of veto on myself. Hysom, you're my replacement nominee. Please take a seat.
Now, I cannot stress just how crucial this win was for Jag because the target was not as locked in on Heisem as it originally seemed. All week, the vote kept flipping back and forth between Heisem and Cameron, and if Jag was in that seat instead of Cameron, it's very likely that Jag would have been deemed a worthy threat and he could have been evicted anyways. So this win was mega clutch. However, even with the safety, Jag's game really started to plummet. In the beginning of the week, Sari, Izzy, and Felicia wanted to make Jag feel more comfortable acting as a pawn on the block, so they made an alliance with him called the Seven Deadly Sins, which included themselves, Matt, Blue, and Jared. That sounds pretty good, right? Wrong. This alliance was not a real alliance for Sari's side. It was simply just a tool to try and keep Jag in their corner, and Jag didn't realize this. He thought that this was a true Final 7 alliance, but he was being played and it really messed up his game in the coming weeks. Sari was working behind the scenes, secretly setting up more targets on Jag, all while Jag was oblivious and blindly loyal to her. Corey found out about the Seven Deadly Sins alliance, and even though he knew it was a fake alliance, he was nervous about it eventually becoming real, leading to him also wanting to possibly target Jag. Funnily enough, Jag actually formed a three-person alliance with Corey called the Unreliables this week alongside America, but this was a small alliance, and as I mentioned, Corey was already looking at possibly getting rid of Jag, so I can't really say that the Unreliables were ride or die. Cameron and Red were fully targeting Jag at this point too, due to some nudging from Sari, meaning that Jag was looking to be in a lot of danger come week 4. As for this week though, the vote did end up falling on Heisem, and he was evicted unanimously to wrap things up. Hello Jag. Hi Julie. Please cast your vote to evict. I vote to evict Heisem. By a vote of 11 to 0, Heisem, you are evicted from the Big Brother house. After Heisem's eviction, the week 4 HOH kicked off, and it just so happened to be the most famous competition in all of Big Brother history, the Pressure Cooker. The Pressure Cooker is an infamously long endurance challenge that is all about digging deep, and Jag went in wanting to win. He looked rock solid standing in the cooker, outlasting many of the other house guests, but after nearly 13 hours, Jag appeared to fall asleep while standing up. He briefly let go of his button, and he was eliminated in fourth place. All I know is that I'm so tired and trying so hard to stay awake. Out of all of the people to end up winning, Cameron won the HOH, and oof, this was not good for Jack. Cameron was solidly convinced that he was in an eight-person alliance called Legend 25 that was basically just another faction that Sari controlled, and although this wasn't a real alliance to most of its members, it was real to Cameron, and Jag was the target of this fake alliance. Now, over the prior couple of days before the week 3 eviction, Jag had been given some information from America and Heisem, and he was able to put the pieces together and briefly realize that Sari and Izzy were the centerpieces of the house and that they were running everything. Jag had this information in the palm of his hands, and he could have used it in his conversation with Cameron to try and swing the target off of his back and onto them, but he didn't. Jag stayed loyal to the seven deadly sins and chose not to throw them under the bus. So, Jag was put up on the block for the second week in a row, but this time he was the target and he was next to his closest ally, Blue. A few days ago, Legend 25 decided that Jag was the target this week. So it's Jag. Yep, absolutely. Jag's target, 100%. This is falling right into plan for me. Thank God we created the fake Legend 25 Alliance. Things are definitely not going as planned at all. The alliances I've been a part of, those have sort of imploded. If I pledge my loyalty, that is not something that I take lightly. Jag is the ultimate target for Legend 25. It seems like his mind is already made up and there's not really any wiggle room for me to not be put on the block. I see my face appear on the memory wall, and at this point, there is a fire within me, and I'm ready to fight. Jag was in a very bad spot, and he knew it, but he still had the veto he could gun for. Unfortunately, Jag couldn't quite pull off the win, coming in second to Red, and Sari put in work to ensure that Red did not use the veto. Jag could have done so much to push the target onto somebody else, and America was even pleading to Jag to tell Cameron about Sari and Izzy working all sides of the house because she knew that any information that Cameron received about that could sway him into making a big move, 
But Jag didn't trust America. He was fully snowed by Sari, so he didn't do this, which not only squashed any chance of the veto being used, but it also fractured Jag's relationship with America, and he lost the support of her and Corey, although Corey wasn't really in Jag's corner at this time anyways. Red left the nominations intact, and this was pretty much the worst case scenario for Jag. Matt tried making a pitch to Sari to keep Jag and use his physicality to go after Cameron, and it seemed like it was starting to stick, but they needed to get Jared on board. Jared was pretty set on getting rid of Jag, especially since Jared was in a showmance with Blue, so without Jared, Sari wasn't going to go through with this, practically sealing Jag's fate. It's just not smart. Without Jared's vote, I can't see a way to save Jag. He's so stupid. Unless there was a miracle, Jag was going to go home. But a miracle came. Before the week ended, a twist was introduced. The path to power. The viewers had been voting on the players all week, and the top four voted house guests would anonymously get to compete in a special competition where the winner would receive the power of invincibility. This is huge. I'm on the block next to my ally. I'm hoping this power falls into the right hands, and especially my hands, so I can make it out safe this week. The players chosen ended up being Sari, Corey, Matt, and Jack. This was the perfect opportunity for Jag to save himself. This was what he needed. Jag went into the room, tried his hardest, and lost. You did not have the fastest time on the power path. Therefore, you have not earned the secret superpower. I'm just gonna have to campaign for the votes and see what I can do and see if I can survive here another week. Matt and Corey outperformed him, with Matt winning the power, leaving Jag at square one again. Not only did Jag not know what the power did, but he also didn't know who had it, so he couldn't even campaign for it. Hope had been given to Jag, but just as quickly, it had been taken away. Thursday night approached fast, and before you knew it, the players began voting to evict. Ten players went into the diary room, and ten players chose to evict Jag. By a unanimous 10-0 vote, Jag was evicted from the Big Brother house. By a vote of 10 to 0, Jag, you are evicted from the Big Brother house. That was it. No flair. In an instant, Jag's game was over. You could see the disappointment on his face as he began saying his goodbyes, and I get it. When you walk into the Big Brother house, your goal and expectation is to win, not to get unanimously evicted in 13th place. Jag was devastated, as it was seemingly his last few moments in the Big Brother house, but as he walked towards the front door, a looming and mysterious sound boomed through the house. Everyone halted in their steps, confused as ever, until Red eventually read a letter that was sent from the BB comic verse stating that the power of invincibility had been activated, which made the evicted house guest invincible, therefore saving Jag. Alright, love y'all. The BB power of invincibility has been activated. <laughs> Jag, you are safe tonight, and you have another shot at the $750,000. Every single person voted to evict me. Clearly, I know I have one person who wants me in this house at least. For the record, as a viewer, I was completely blindsided when this happened. I figured that Matt had jumped ship from Jag at this point and that it was extremely unlikely that he would use the power to save him this week, but I was wrong. Jag's bond with Matt proved to be the single most important relationship that Jag had made throughout the entire game because it saved him when he needed it the most. Before the eviction took place, Matt had spoken with Sari and eventually came to the decision that saving Jag and effectively making him an unbreakable loyal ally was going to be worth it. Matt and Sari told Jag before the eviction that he was going to be safe no matter what, so Jag did have an inclination that the power was going to be used to save him. Jared also hinted to Jag that he might be saved by the power, but we'll get more into that in a little bit. If Jag found out, I can use it to save Jag. Elimination. No one knows how blue and Jag stay. Okay. It would be nice to have Jag. I know Jag's loyal. And Jag's gonna fight. He's a good player. Like, he can, he can help us. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Red. Mm -hmm. I love you, bro. I know. I don't want to play this game without you. Yeah. I have the superpower. You have the superpower. Using it on you. You using it on me? I'm riding or dying for Matt. He's my guy. I trust him 100%. My hands wow. are clammy. I'm gonna throw up. No. 
Now, while I certainly think that the decision to save Jag mostly was a result of Matt's own decision making, you have to give Jag at least a little bit of credit here. Through all of Jag's genuine effort to build relationships in the beginning of the game, he successfully built a true bond with Matt that was stronger than pretty much anybody thought. For all intents and purposes, Jag should have been the 13th place finisher on Big Brother 25, but because of the social connection that Jag had made with Matt, Matt felt comfortable using his power to save him, which gave Jag a second life in the game. In turn, Jag was fully loyal to Matt from here on out, basically acting as his ride or die, and the two went on to form a final two deal that they would call the Minutemen, which was clearly inspired by the hitmen of Big Brother 16. We need a name, bro. Like, there's been an alliance called the Hitmen. The Minutemen. Minutemen. Wait, that's the cool. The Minutemen. He saved me with his superpower. So he's someone I definitely love to go to the final two with. Although Jag was saved from the eviction, he was still high atop the target list. And if he didn't pivot his game or find some solid footing, he could find himself in the exact same position the following week. I mean, terrifying. What the? So, going into week five, we saw Jared win the HOH, which felt like the first okay outcome for Jag since Riley won the HOH back in week one. Cameron had become the new house target following his HOH reign, so Jared nominated Cameron in red for eviction, with America as a possible backup target in case Cameron won the veto. So far, so good. But of course, we can't have an easy week yet, can we? Cameron went on to win the veto, which meant that the primary house target was safe and a new target would need to be found. Although America was next in line on Jared's hit list, Corey didn't like this because Corey and America had become a bit of a showmance around this time, so he put in a lot of work to try and convince Jared not to do this. On top of this, America gave Jared a compelling campaign as well, which actually worked. Jared was no longer looking to target America, so he needed to look for a new option. And who did he choose? Jag. What? Where did this come from? Well, let's rewind a little bit. I briefly mentioned earlier that before Jag was evicted, Jared had informed him that he was going to be saved by the power. Jag had absolutely no idea how Jared knew about the power because Matt said that he only told Sari about it. Obviously, we know that it was Sari that told Jared because Jared's her son, but Jag didn't know that, so he questioned Sari on if she told anybody. Sari denied that she did, but Jag wanted to know what was going on, and he continued to dig to try and find some answers. Just know, bro, it may be a high possibility. That both of us stay. Maybe. Matt told me that only me and Sari know about the power, so I'm just thinking, what does Jared know? And who did he hear it from? I think Sari told Jared. That's the only way it's really adding up for me. Last week, I was on board with Matt saving Jag. But now that I think about it, Jag already has reasons not to trust me because Jared already screwed things up. You really want to go home. Jag. Jag. Sari and Jared were worried about Jag's continued investigation on the matter, and not wanting to get exposed for their own relationship, they had decided to move their backup target from America over to Jag. In a Seven Deadly Sins meeting in the HOH room, Blue volunteered Jag to be the replacement nominee for some reason, where everyone then disguised the fact that Jag was the target by saying that he was just a pawn to get Red out of the house. Jag reluctantly had to agree to being a pawn because he was kind of pushed into a corner, but he had no idea that he was actually the target. I want to meet with the seven deadly sins because even though clearly they voted to evict me, I still want to work with them and I still trust them moving forward. Idea. <laughs> and I know, and I know you don't want to be a pawn. I'm just- no, I don't want to be a pawn is what I'll say. But that's not a bad idea. You sit next to Red and then and they'll be saying, damn. Like, if this is what we decide on, like, I'm down, because I know we have the votes. I'm pretty sure Blue doesn't realize it, but this little idea of hers just sealed her best friend's fate. Jared nominated Jag as the replacement nominee next to Red, and oh my god, Jag was gonna get evicted again. 
For the second time in two weeks, this should have been the end of Jags' game, but a situation arose that changed things up. One of the reasons that the house felt so comfortable keeping Red in the game was because Red and Cameron had a falling out during the week. And since Cameron was still a top target, having Red there to go against Cameron was great for everyone. However, the day before the eviction, Red opened up about how he would be willing to reconcile with Cameron and work with him moving forward. This raised some alarm bells and made some players realize that Red might be a bit of an obstacle again. On top of that, Jared had a lot of loose ends that were not tied up, and if Red and Cameron compared notes, they could have some serious dirt on Jared and have reason to target him if they won power. So Sari felt like she needed to step in and protect her son. She flipped the votes onto Red the night before the eviction, and come Thursday night, Red was blindsided in a vote of 8-2, to two, with only Cameron and Bowie Jane voting out Jag as they were completely left out of the plan. Come on, dude. You were sitting in a pretty position, and it's starting to make me feel a little uneasy because Red possibly wants to rekindle his relationship with Cameron, and that is ultimately the most dangerous thing that can happen for me. Hearing about this Jared and Red conversation has really got me worried. Now we have to look at it as which is the worst of two evils. Do we blindside Jag and end Seven Deadly Sins, or do we blindside Red and Cameron and end Legend 25? By a vote of eight to two, Red, you are evicted from the Big Brother house. For the second week in a row, Jag survived by the skin of his teeth. But to be quite frank, it was mostly due to luck. Jag had no control in the game, and he had zero influence on flipping the target over to Red. It's here that I feel I should give a quick and tiny recap of Jag's first five weeks. And I'll be honest, it's not pretty. Jag started off the game with the right idea of creating a mega alliance with himself at the core, but the way he went about it was a bit sloppy. And because of it, the alliance mostly failed, allowing the other side of the house to take control and hold power. A string of unlucky HOHs put a lot of pressure onto Jag's game, where he lost his closest ally in week two, and from there, he was nominated three weeks in a row where he barely survived each time. He had to win the veto the first time to ensure he wasn't the victim of a failed backdoor on Heisum, then he literally was evicted the second time, but was saved due to one of his only allies winning a game-changing power, and then the third time, he was put on the block as the target after the veto ceremony, and only survived due to circumstances outside of his control. People that he considered allies would seemingly get frustrated with his gameplay and jump ship. Heck, even Blue had become more loyal to Jared than to him, and Jag seemed primed to be a perpetual target until he was eventually evicted for good. It sounds harsh, and I don't like having to say it like this, but this might have been the worst stretch of gameplay from an eventual Big Brother winner ever. Jag even got straight ones from the panelists on RHAP in both weeks 4 and 5, emphasizing how poor of a position he seemed to be in. At this point, things were looking unbelievably rough for Jag's game, but even through the murky waters, there was some hope. Matt still wanted Jag in the game, Corey and America were still in the Unreliables alliance with Jag, even though it had been a tumultuous road for them the prior two weeks, and, well, okay, that's kind of it at this point, but it's still something. If you've been listening intently, you may have noticed that I have repeatedly said that something needs to change in order for Jag to have legitimate life in the game. Now is that time. It's here that we enter what I am going to call part one of the middle game. No one planned for this and no one knows what's going on. What are my other options in order to stay safe and move forward in this game? To start off week 6 at the final 12, Jag's ridiculously unlucky streak of HOH comp winners continued, with Cameron winning HOH once again. Oh my god. Even though Jag wasn't playing great the prior few weeks, I really do need to emphasize that he was getting what felt like the worst outcomes in these HOHs. Once Cameron won the HOH, everyone just assumed that he was going to do what he had tried to do on his first reign. Target Jag. This is terrible for my game. I was Cameron's target last time he was HOH, and it would be very easy for him to put me up again and target me this week. In fact, Cameron told almost everyone that that is what he was going to do. Put Jag and Blue on the block, with Jag being the target. But things got a little bit interesting during Cameron's one-on-one -on -one with Jag. Cameron told him that everyone expected and wanted him to put him on the block, but he offered Jag a deal to not put him up if he promised to do the same thing next week. Jag, of course, agreed, and that was the end of the conversation. Frankly, I think it is a waste of our time to go after each other. I really want to put you on the block, right next to Blue. But I think you're right. 
if I don't put you on the block this week, which is what everyone wants, mm -hmm. I need absolute safety next week. I can offer you that this week. I will hold up to that promise. I will. Really? I'm We're doing the eyes. He might be actually willing to take the gamble on keeping me around. And at this point, my lips are sealed. Jag, to his credit, did not tell anybody about this deal. And he also did a decent job of pretending like he was the target. When it was time for the nomination ceremony, most of the house expected Jag and Blue to be put up, but they were all shocked once Cameron revealed his nominations to be Izzy and Felicia. The next house guest that I am making safe is... After weeks and weeks of being thrown around like a rag doll, Jag was finally allowed to sit on the sidelines as a new frantic wave of gameplay shook up the house. Up to this point, the trio of Sari, Jared, and Izzy had been in control of pretty much every major decision and eviction so far in the game. I didn't mention it earlier, but Izzy was the only player in the house to recognize that Jared was Sari's son. However, instead of ratting them out, she used it to form a tight bond with the two, and they ran the game from that point forward. But now that Izzy was on the block, things in the game were looking like they were going to change. Jared went on to win the veto, but he was worried that Cameron was going to nominate Sari if he used it, so he was forced to leave his two allies on the block. This meant that for the first time in three weeks, Jag wasn't nominated. Finally, this gave Jag at the very least a few days of breathing room where he didn't have to worry about getting evicted. As for the vote, Sari still had a lot of pull in the house and she had the votes lined up for Felicia to be evicted, but America put in motion a plan to rally the house against Izzy as she saw Izzy as a huge threat. What ensued was a chaotic flurry of spilled information and allegiance breaking where Jared's entire game blew up and Corey and America led the charge to flip the vote onto Izzy. If I tried to get into every little thing that happened during this mess, then I would be here for another three hours, so forgive me for summarizing. Basically, Cameron revealed to Jag that Blue was ratting everything they said to her to Jared, which opened Jag's eyes more to the house dynamics. Jag then talked with Corey and agreed to flip the vote onto Izzy, and then finally, finally, Corey revealed to Jag the full situation. Corey admitted that he knew about the Seven Deadly Sins alliance that Jag was in and that it was fake and only made so that Sari and Izzy could keep Jag in check. This was like a eureka moment for Jag, and he finally was able to understand the game that had been played around him across the past few weeks. This was his chance to break free from his shackles and jump aboard the correct ship, and this flip onto Izzy was the perfect way to kick things off. Corey, America, Matt, Mimi, Bowie, and Jag had rallied together and had the votes lined up to blindside Izzy and work together moving forward. Unfortunately, Sari was a very observant player and realized something was amiss, so she sent Jared to go find out what was happening. Jared made up a lie and bluffed to Matt saying that Jag had ratted out the whole plan to him. Because of Jag's unreliability in the past, Matt believed this, which momentarily made Corey and company very upset with Jag, but eventually a big fight between Corey and Jared blew up where Jag was able to clear his name, and this was the final nail in the coffin for the flip. Izzy was evicted from the house in a vote of 8-1, to one, with only Sari voting for her to stay. But I need Jag to realize what I now realize. They're trying to pit us against each other. I have known about seven deadly sins for like three weeks. Dude, clearly I've been played. And there's been a thing with me and America. Same exact people. Swapped out you, Blue and Matt. Jared, Sari, I've been very sus about. I know now that my Alliance members leaked information to other people in the house. Seven Deadly Sins is dead. The points do make sense about needing to have Izzy gone. So here's the votes. Okay. Me, Jag, America, you, Mimi, maybe Matt. I want to work with Jag, and if I'm working with Jag, I need to work with Matt. I'm getting a sketchy vibe from Corey and Matt. I think Izzy in trouble. Talk to Skeezy and Matt and see what you think. If I have to twist the truth a little to get the answer that I need, I'm definitely willing to do that. Jag is telling me, yeah, vote out Izzy. That's what Jag's telling me y'all talked about. Jag, what are you doing? This is supposed to be a secret. We heard today that you warned Jared about the vote that- Did I ever do that? No, you never no, said that to me. I never did. 
Never said it to me. Didn't Jared just come in and me. tell us that? Jared is a liar. This never happened. I have to now defend my name and my honor. This morning, I hear that you told him this, which I think everyone, including you, agrees, did not happen. No. I believe you. Hello, Jag. Hi, Julie. Please cast your vote to evict. I vote to evict Izzy. By a vote of eight to one, Izzy, you are evicted from the Big Brother house. Izzard, you played yourself. I was loyal to the seven deadly sins till the end. Clearly you weren't. Sorry, but this is goodbye. This was an extremely important week for Jag, as the main power structure had been blown apart and many other players made themselves targets. Corey, Jared, and Cameron were all in the spotlight now, which allowed Jag to hide in the shadows as these new contenders took shots at one another. Going into week 7 at the final 11, this is typically where the jury phase of the game would begin, but Julie announced that they were taking it old school this year. Instead of a 9-person jury, it would be a 7-person jury, meaning that two more players would have to be evicted before they got to that coveted jury stage. It seemed like it was the whole house against Jared, Blue, and Sari, but wouldn't you know it, Jared won the HOH. Oh my god, this is the one thing I didn't want to happen. He put me on the block two weeks ago. He threw my name under the bus and I just don't know where I stand this week. Now, Jag could have been in some serious danger here because Jared was looking to target Jag just a couple days prior, but the fight between Jared and Corey changed things. Thinking that Corey was working with Cameron, Jared switched his target off of Jag and now wanted to try and backdoor Cameron, but Jag was still his initial backup. However, for the second major time in this game, Matt saved Jag. Matt was able to recover his relationship with Jared and convince him that he could trust Jag and that Jag was on his side. This was not true, but Jared bought it and he kept Jag off the block. Jared nominated Corey and America instead, with the plan still being a Cameron backdoor. However, Cameron was randomly chosen to play in the veto, which put everyone on high alert. But guess who else was chosen to play? The Jag man. Jack had a very solid strategy throughout the competition, and he was the only player to beat Cameron in the comp, earning him the veto. I don't want to waste time running around to different feet, and I realize it's easier to fill my helmet with feet that shoot vertically, so I'm focusing on those. The winner is Jack. Let's go! Let's go! Golden power of veto, baby! It's my second veto of the summer. Man, I just can't describe how excited I am about this. It was his second win of the season, and not only did it fully guarantee his safety for the week, but it also meant that the backdoor plan on Cameron could go through. Jag used the veto on Corey, and Jared named Cameron the replacement nominee, sealing his fate. I have decided to use the power of veto on Corey. Cameron, gotta use you as my replacement nominee, brother. Now, outside of the competition win, Jag actually did some solid work this week, particularly when it came to forming genuine alliances that would prove to become extremely important in the weeks to come. Jag and Bowie began bonding over their shared feelings of betrayal from Sari. Blue had also become aware of just how much Jared hadn't been telling her in the beginning of the game, which made her feel dumb for turning on Jag. So, she turned her allegiance back over to Jag, and Jag, Blue, and Matt formed a tight trio. Jared has been being a part of a different alliance. It definitely blindsided me quite a bit. We need to align as mm -hmm. us three. I'm gonna just let y'all know, yeah. whatever y'all wanna do with me is with me only and not with him. When it boils down to who I can really trust, it's y'all too. On top of that, Matt and Jag solidified a Final Four deal with Corey and America that Jag was truly down for. Jag, Corey, and America had had quite the up and down experience so far in the game, but they were riding high now and ready to take it all the way. Obviously, we trust each other and then blue. But when it comes to who we're gonna move forward with, I think we really need to trust Corey and America. The idea of working with Corey and America does sound good. I'm riding and dying with Jag. That's my guy, that's my bro. Wherever Jag goes, we'll stick it out together. The people I feel like I can actually work with moving forward, Matt and Jag. This is the group that can carry me forward in this game. Jared and Sari were still looking to target Jag in the future, and Mimi was also very wary of him, but for the time being, Jag had some numbers behind him and the advantage moving forward. Cameron was evicted in a unanimous vote, and that brings us to the first double eviction of the summer. Hello, Jag. Hey, Julie. Please cast your vote to evict. I vote to evict Cameron. By a vote of eight to zero, Cameron, you are evicted from the Big Brother house. 
The double eviction began, and for what I can legitimately say is the first time since week one, one of Jag's allies won the HOH with Corey coming out victorious. Jag could freely sit back knowing that he was not going to be targeted, and Corey nominated Jared next to Blue. Matt went on to win the veto, which is another great outcome for Jag, and Matt chose not to use it, locking the nominations in place. Sari couldn't get the numbers behind her to save her son, and Jared was evicted in a vote of six to one. Hello, Jag. Hey, Julie. Please cast your vote to evict. Sadly, I vote to evict Jared. By a vote of six to one, Jared. You are evicted from the Big Brother house. Both Jared and Cameron had targeted Jag multiple times, so having both of them leave on the same night was incredible for Jag's game. However, all that goodness came to a halt when Zombie Week was announced. Zombie Week, which is one of the worst twists ever made, allowed for both Cameron and Jared to re-enter the house as quote-unquote zombies. Instead of a normal week of Big Brother playing out, this week would be focused solely on Cameron and Jared. A series of competitions were to be held between the two, which would all lead up to one final competition the following Thursday that would determine which zombie would re-enter the game and which zombie would be evicted for good. This basically acted as a week off for all the actual players in the game, meaning this was solely a social strategic week. Cameron took the advantage over Jared in the competition, so everyone in the house was banking on Cameron returning to the game. When you're doing the comp, I noticed every time, like you stand there and you wait. So I'm letting him know a piece of advice to show him that I'm rooting for him. If they're gonna fall, they're gonna fall anyway. So those two to three seconds might be better for you to like continue to move. Hopefully this will keep me out of his line of sight if he stays in the game. Matt was able to utilize what was left in his relationship with Cameron to pull him in, and Cameron proposed a three-person alliance called The Fugitives, which consisted of himself, Matt, and Jack. Cameron had been a major thorn in Jag's side for a long time, so securing this alliance was monumental for Jag's game moving forward. If I have the opportunity to work with you and Matt, even if it's a tryout basis, y'all give me one week. Give me one week of trust and see what I can do with it. As weird as it sounds, I'm open to working with Cameron. He's a strong competitor, so are Matt and I, and I would honestly just rather work with him than against him. I'm digging the fugitives. Fugitives. Is this where we're making it official that we are the fugitives? Fugitive. The fugitives. <laughs> the second most monumental pickup this week was Bowie. Corey and America had Bowie firmly on their side in the prior weeks, but Matt worked hard and was successfully able to flip Bowie against Corey and America and over to himself and Jack. It's important to realize that Matt was the one putting in the work to bring in Cameron and Bowie, but because of his bond with Matt, Jack reaped all the benefits, gaining both Bowie and Cameron as solid allies. As for the rest of Zombie Week, Cameron did in fact re-enter the house and Jared was officially out of the game. Resurrected. As if Cameron coming back into the game wasn't enough, Cameron also went on to win the final 10 HOH. With this newly formed Fugitives Alliance, Jag could sit back this week knowing that he was safe and he could ride into the jury stage while Cameron did all the dirty work. Cameron wanted to target Felicia, believing that she wouldn't vote for him if she was on the jury, so he nominated her next to Mimi. Cameron also won the veto, but with all the power in his hands, he started to consider a possible move to get rid of Corey. Jag wanted to go to the final four with Corey, so he fought hard against this plan. And to his credit, it actually worked. Jag went to bat for Corey, and it was enough to convince Matt to back off from the plan. Matt then was able to convince Cameron to back down as well, and Cameron chose not to use the veto, solidifying his nominations. I will take the gamble to go ahead and get his ass out of here right now. I don't fully agree. If Corey goes on the block, Suddenly, Matt and I have to make a decision. Either way, it's going to reveal our cards. That's just not good for us. After the veto wasn't used, the plan began to shift from evicting Felicia over to evicting Mimi, and Jag actually was able to convince Cameron to be okay with the target switch. On top of this, Matt and Jag were able to pin the blame on the vote flip onto Corey, which was great for them, as that just put a larger target on Corey and a smaller target on themselves. Should we just get Mimi out? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It sounds like Matt and Bowie are on the same page as me that keeping Felicia might make more sense. So in order to do this, we'd have to convince Corey and America to keep the person who just cooked them. How funny would it be if, again, we save Felicia without Felicia knowing? 
Did this just fall into our laps right now? If Corey and America are willing to keep someone in the house who's actively targeting them, then you already know what time it is. It's Minuteman time. Corey is pitching to Cameron, but Cameron really doesn't like Corey, so he's not listening to him at all. I need to change the direction here and make Cam realize that keeping Felicia is a terrible move for Corey. This actually has more merit than I've heard of anything yet. This is not a good move for him, and it's a good move for the fugitives. By doing the Mimi flip, I was able to keep both Cameron and Corey happy. They both still think I'm good with them, even though my real allegiance is to my Minuteman, Matt. Mimi was then evicted in a unanimous vote, and finally, finally, we enter the jury stage of the game with Jag's momentum rising with each passing day. Hello, Jag. Hi, Julie. Please cast your vote to evict. I vote to evict Mimi. By a vote of seven to zero, Nicole. You are evicted from the Big Brother house. So before we hop right into the final nine round, let's take a look at Jag's positioning. Since Jag was evicted, his position has improved to a ridiculous degree, and he now found himself in the center of the house with pretty much everyone wanting to work with him. He had his Minutemen final two with Matt, then he had the Fugitives alliance with Matt and Cameron, a three-person alliance with Matt and Blue, another three-person alliance with Matt and Bowie, and a final four deal with Matt, Corey, and America. The only players he was not directly aligned with were Sari and Felicia, but they weren't really competitive threats at this point, so the risk of them winning power and targeting Jag weren't all too high. On top of that, Jag wasn't even high on the target list anymore. Everyone was targeting Cameron to a degree, Cameron was targeting Corey, and Corey and America were targeting Blue. Jag was playing the middle quite well now, and although this was in large part due to Matt, Jag was no slouch anymore. He had a stronger relationship with Corey and America, and he was building his own relationship with Bowie that would eventually grow very strong. So, back to the game, at the start of the final 9 round, we saw Bowie Jane come away with the surprise HOH win. Jag was very closely aligned with Bowie now, so this meant that, once again, Jag was safe for the week. Although Matt and Jag had just formed an alliance with Cameron, Matt saw him as a gigantic threat and wanted to target him. Bowie was hesitant to do so though because Cameron had never done anything to her in the game, so instead she nominated Sari and Felicia as she wasn't aligned with them. However, this did leave the door open for Cameron to be back door. So going into the veto, Jag wanted to win it so he could have some leverage with Bowie and maybe get that backdoor plan in motion. The veto comp was Zingbot and Otev, and Jag utilized the strategy of stashing as many answers as he possibly could in order to help him in future rounds, and it worked. Jag crushed the competition, and he won his third veto of the summer. I want to make sure I take the time to set myself up for all the future rounds. So I'm stashing different photos that I see off to the side. That way, in later rounds, if I need to get to them, I know exactly where they are. Yay! Congratulations! Veto number three, baby, let's go! With the veto in his hands, Jag got to work in sealing the deal on backdooring Cameron. He spoke with Bowie in the HOH room and revealed that Cameron thought Bowie was leaking information to members outside of their alliance and that he was suspicious of her. And this was enough to fully convince Bowie to make the move. Jag used the veto to save Felicia and Cameron was named the replacement nominee. Cameron knew at this point that his fate was sealed and by the end of the week, he was evicted once again in a unanimous vote. Cameron, sorry dude, the Minutemen are coming for you. And you're just playing right into our hands by saying all this stuff about Bowie. And now, I'm gonna use it against you. You now just in the bathroom with me, talking about you, throwing you under the bus. I've been wanting to protect Cameron, but if he's saying these things about me, I may have to think twice. I have decided to use the power of veto on Mama Fee. I nominate Cameron. All in all, a pretty well executed plan. Hello, Jag. Hi, Julie, you look mad exquisite. <laughs> Please cast your vote to evict. I vote to evict Cam. By a vote of six to zero, Cameron, you are evicted from the Big Brother house. Going into the final eight after getting rid of the biggest comp threat in the house, a twist for the week was announced. It was Superpower Week, and the first power to be unleashed would be granting the upcoming HOH with invisibility. What that meant is that the winner of the HOH comp would be a secret, and nobody would know who was in charge unless they chose to tell anyone. 
And the HOH would also be allowed to compete in the following HOH comp as well. This was a barbarically overpowered addition to the superpower because you could theoretically win HOH for two weeks in a row and run the house to your liking for half a month. One at a time, the players went into the backyard to compete in BB Comics and for the first time all season, Jag won the HOH. Let's go. The winning time is 8 minutes and 30 seconds. I need to change anyway. Let's go! Invisible HOH, baby! My first HOH of the season, I'm stoked! This couldn't have come at a better time, as now that there was no more consensus house target with Cameron gone, Jag was potentially in the line of fire if the wrong person won HOH, but now he was safe and guaranteed to make it to the final seven. Although he was aligned with her, Jag wanted to target Blue, and when I first watched it, this move confused me, but now I get it. At around this time, Jag had begun thinking about his ideal endgame plans, and the final five that he wanted would be himself, Matt, Bowie, Felicia, and Sari. He wanted Matt and Bowie there because those were the two that he trusted the most, and he wanted Sari and Felicia there because he felt that they were the easiest to beat in competitions. That meant that he wanted Blue, Corey, and America out as the next three. By targeting Corey or America, it would have guaranteed that whichever one of those two stayed, they would be mad at Jag and gunning for him. But if he were to instead target Blue, that would get rid of someone he doesn't want in the final five anyways, while also appeasing Corey and America, meaning that they might not target him if they won power next. So I actually do understand Jag's logic here. Ideally, it's me, Matt, Bowie, Sari, Felicia. These are the people that we want to be going against in competitions. Although we've been working with Comerica and Blue, none of them can go to Final Five with Matt and I. Jag had told Matt and Bowie that he had won the Invisible HOH, and after he decided on his plan to target Blue, he also told Corey in America. Jag nominated Blue and Felicia, and afterwards, a second twist for Superhero Week was revealed. There would be two vetoes for the week. Although this doubled the chances that Blue would win the veto, it also opened the door for other fancy moves to be made if necessary. The first veto comp was the Disc Endurance comp, and wouldn't you know it, it came down to Blue versus Jag. The two stood up there for hours until finally, Blue dropped, crowning Jag the winner and giving him his fourth veto win of the summer. Congratulations, Jag. You have won the golden power of veto. Let's go. After hours of holding on, I finally pulled out the dub. Now, I get why Jag went for the win here, as he didn't want Blue to win the veto, but with this being his third comp win in a row, it solidified that Jag was the new comp beast in the house, and it bolstered the target on his back. As if that wasn't enough, Blue ended up winning the second veto anyways. Jag initially planned on just nominating Sari in her place and sending home Felicia, but eventually, he came around to an idea that Matt pitched about putting both Corey and America on the block. Although they were all in a Final Four together, Corey and America knew that Jag and Matt had become the frontrunners and they were itching to take a shot at Jag. So making this move on the pair before they could make the move on him was imperative. Jag took a risk and he revealed to Blue that he was in fact the invisible HOH and he was targeting her, but he impressively was able to twist it up, saying that he only did so because Corey and America tricked him. But now his eyes had opened up and he was going to put them on the block. This was perfect damage control by Jack and was exactly what Blue wanted to hear and he successfully roped her back in for the time being. I need to tell Blue that I'm the invisible HOH that put her up. My plan is to drive home the fact that it was Corey in America who poisoned me against her. I'm the invisible HOH. I thought I could trust Corey and America. And they have been saying yeah. that like you are definitely going after me and Matt. They're snakes. So first I want to apologize. I could have made a different decision mm -hmm. and I didn't. It's okay. It's fully okay. I'm putting Corey and America up. And I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. Listen, I'm really not that upset that Jag put me on the blog because I'm sure that Corey and America was behind all of this mess. At the veto meeting, Blue used her veto on herself, Jag used his veto on Felicia, and then Jag double blindsided Corey and America by nominating them both as replacement nominees. Sorry, Corey and America, but the watch ticks for thee. I cannot sit there and be that upset at Jag. I would have nominated him and Matt next week, so I understand. Let me know when you want to talk again. 
literally off. Perfect. America was very visibly frustrated with Jag, which was fair. But I do believe that this was the right move for Jag to make because they were going to target him if they won power the next week. Corey was the consensus target for most of the House despite his efforts to stay, and he was evicted unanimously at the end of the week. Hello, Jag. Hey, Julie. How you doing tonight? Well, I put up half the house on the block this week, so I'm living the dream. All right. <laughs> By a vote of five to zero, Corey, you are evicted from the Big Brother house. Skis. On a human level, you're one of the greatest friends I've made in this house. Unfortunately, I had to make this move way earlier than I even wanted to. I love you so much, man. Going into the final seven, Jag could have been in some danger if the HOH didn't go his way. Because of Jag's dominant comp streak in the recent weeks, he was target number one for Sari, Felicia, and America, but as bad as that might sound on paper, it realistically wasn't in practice. Those three players had a combined one competition win across the entire season, and Jag had Matt and Bowie fully loyal to him, so the odds of his side winning power again were high. Since Jag's prior HOH reign was invisible, he was allowed to compete in this final 7 HOH comp as well, and wouldn't you know it, Jag won again! Let's go! Let's go! Two HOHs back to back? That's illegal in Big Brother! There could have been a lot of bad outcomes this week. This is not one of them. This was his second HOH win of the season and his fourth competition win in a row. And if it wasn't clear before that Jag was the biggest comp threat in the house, it was certainly clear now. Without Corey, America was much less of a threat, so Jag wanted to target Blue once more. To ensure that one of them would go home, he nominated both Blue and America for eviction, with Blue happily believing that she was a pawn to send America home. America and Blue are on the block, but actually my target is Blue. It may seem crazy, but right now I'm going after people that are competition threats. That way I can win my way to the end. Jag, of course, then went on to win the veto again. This being his fifth veto win and his fifth competition win in a row, which is a Big Brother record. And the winner of the Golden Power of Veto is... Jag! Let's go! Another veto in the bag! That's five comp wins in a row! It definitely was not necessary to win this comp, but at this point, it's not like throwing this veto was going to diminish his threat level or anything, so hey, why not rack up the wins if you can? Jag didn't use the veto, locking in the nominations, and Blue remained the target. They didn't tell Blue until the very last minute that she was going home, but once she knew, she indicated that she thought Matt was playing the best game and that Corey also shared this sentiment. Although Jag had his Minutemen alliance with Matt for quite a while now, this alarmed him and made him realize that he might have to take out Matt before the final two if he wanted to win. Before he could think about it too much though, it was time for the eviction. Blue was evicted unanimously, and not only was it time for the endgame to start, but it was also time for the second double eviction of the season. By a vote of 4-0, to zero, Blue you are evicted from the Big Brother house. Going into the final six double eviction, Jag had to sit on the sidelines and watch a nail-biting HOH. Sari took an early lead, which would have been a disastrous outcome for Jag, but Bowie Jane managed to come back and pull off the win. With Bowie in power in so little time for anything to really happen, she nominated America and Felicia, with America being the target. Matt then went on to win the veto, which meant that for the first time in three weeks, Jag did not have safety, and he was vulnerable. However, Jag was fortunate that the winners of the HOH and veto just so happened to be his two closest allies, and they remained loyal and didn't take the opportunity to get rid of him. Matt kept the nominations the same, and America was swiftly evicted in sixth place. I'm sorry, America. You can't stay in this house any longer. They're gonna win. They're gonna win. They're gonna be final two and they're gonna win. I've seen this over and over again. Hello, Jag. Hey, Julie. Please cast your vote to evict. I vote to evict America. By a vote of three to zero, America, you are evicted from the Big Brother house. It was a whirlwind of a night that likely would have ended in Jag's demise had Sari pulled off the HOH win, but she didn't. And Jag was able to rely on his allies to keep him safe and around where he couldn't do it himself. Entering the final five after the double, we saw Matt pull away with the HOH win. It's at this time that Matt, Jag, and Bowie finally decided to give their final three alliance a name, to which they called it the Mafia. We're thinking We're coming up with the names. I really like the Mafia. 
Oh, I think I'm glad we came up with the name. I love the mafia name for Matt, Jack, and myself because we are like family. Matt felt that it was important that he show his loyalty to Jag and Bowie because he didn't want them to have any reason to target him at the final four, so he left them off the block and instead nominated Sari and Felicia. Not that it mattered for Jag's safety because he went out and won the power of veto for the sixth time, tying Michael's veto record from Big Brother 24 and bringing his overall comp total to a whopping eight wins on the season. Congratulations, Jag. Let's go! Another veto in the bag, baby! Jag was flying high at this point, and he wasn't stopping there. Armed with the knowledge from Blue that Matt was the biggest threat in the end, Jag spoke with Bowie and pitched a final two with her, to which she happily accepted. Up to this point, Bowie had been more loyal to Matt than to Jag, but Jag was able to reel her in now, and he had taken her from Matt. Although I want to be in the final two with my fellow Minuteman Matt, I think I'd have a better chance of winning the game sitting next to Bowie. I hope it's us at the end. Me too. Dude, that'd be sick. Dude, we gotta make that happen. In the event that Bowie wins the final HOH, I want her to choose me over Matt. I love Matt, but I really don't think I would win if I was sitting next to him. On top of that, since Jag won the veto, he had control of how the week played out. Matt wanted Sari to stay, but Jag knew that Matt and Sari had a great bond, so he said, no, we're keeping Felicia. By getting rid of Sari, Jag isolated Matt and ensured that he couldn't pull any funny business if he won power the next round. This final five round was probably the greatest round of Jag's entire game because he really stripped away Matt's position. He was taking out Sari, who was the number for Matt, and he also swiped Bowie from him. Jag didn't use the veto, and he and Bowie evicted Sari at the end of the week. I have helped and protected Matt throughout this game, but I have to start thinking about my own game now. Sari going would be good for my game, but I don't think it's smart for Matt's game at all. I know I want Sari here. I believe she will target Jag and Bowie first before me. If Sari goes this week, next week we cook Felicia. Vice versa. It doesn't matter. But it's right? risky like, letting Sari get too close. Next person on our hit on the Mafia's hit list, Sari. <laughs> Hello, Jag. Hi, Julie. You look spooktacular. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> Please cast your vote to evict. I vote to evict Sari. By a vote of two to zero, Sari, you are evicted from the Big Brother house. Sari, you were my target all along this week. I think if given the chance, you would choose Bowie and Matt over me, Absolutely. and I'm just not going to give you that chance. He's right. Now, we're down to the final four. In a back and forth battle between himself and Bowie, Jag unfortunately lost the tiebreaker round, crowning Bowie Jane as the final four HOH. Now, it would have been nice for Jag to win the HOH and get the guaranteed spot in the final three, but by losing the HOH, it opened the door on possibly an even bigger move. Getting rid of Matt. If Jack were to win the final veto, he would have the sole vote to evict, and Matt would be sitting vulnerable on the block next to Felicia. That might be too good of an opportunity for Jag to pass up, but before he could even bother thinking about it, he's gotta win the veto first. Jag and Bowie hatched a plan to convince Matt to be okay with going on the block, and to Jag's credit, Matt fell for it and accepted being nominated. I have an idea. Bowie, think of a number one to a hundred, and whoever's closest gets to not be on the block. Okay, 77. 73. Well, it was 70. I don't know how you yeah. both did 70s. Matt thinks he just got unlucky, but Bowie and I planned for this. I, I, I would rather put him up for you just to make sure you're safe. Okay, you say, I'm thinking of a number, one to a hundred, and say something that's closer to what I said. He can't be mad at me or Bowie because he thinks this was just a game of luck, and I beat him fair and square. Or not so fair and square. This kept Jag off the block and acted as a nice little insurance policy to have him remain off the block in the case that Bowie won the veto. It doesn't really matter, but I wanted to point it out as yet another example to showcase how Bowie was fully team Jag over Matt now. After nominations, it was time for the all-important veto comp. Really, it all came down to this. If Felicia wins the veto, Jag is gone. If Matt wins the veto, Jag might be gone. But if Jag wins the veto, he's in the final three, and he can maybe even make the move to evict Matt. The players geared up for the comp. They entered their rooms, the challenge began, and... Let's go! Let's go, I made it to the final three, baby. I get to decide who I wanna take with me and Bowie to the final three. 
This is huge. This was Jag's record-breaking seventh veto win of the season. Nobody had ever won that many vetoes before, and on top of that, this brought Jag's total comp wins up to nine, which also tied the record set by Janelle in Big Brother All-Stars and matched by Michael in Big Brother 24. But most importantly, this meant that Jag was safe. Jag was going to the final three with Bowie Jane, and he had the sole decision on who to bring with him, Matt or Felicia. Shortly after winning the veto, Jag revealed to Bowie that he was really considering taking the shot at Matt. This would get rid of the biggest jury threat left in the house, and it would also practically guarantee that either himself or Bowie would win the final HOH, and that they could sit together in the final two. Bowie was reluctant at first, as she did really want the Mafia to make it to the final three together, but eventually she agreed, knowing that she didn't actually have any power, and that it was Jag's decision to make. So, it looked like Jag was going to cut Matt. If Jag went through with this, he would win the game. You could tell that this decision was weighing heavily on him, but he was staying strong as he knew he had to do it in order to win. The day of the eviction arrived, all the cards were set in place, and Jag couldn't do it. Just hours before the eviction took place, Jag broke down and indicated that he couldn't vote Matt out. Matt single-handedly saved Jag when he was evicted back in week four, and the two had been a tight duo ever since. If he was going to take Matt out, he wanted to do it the right way, which in his mind was at the final three. From a game perspective, this seemed like an absolutely terrible move. Jag went from almost a 100% chance at winning the game down to, at best, a 67% chance. But as the first sick house guest in the US, Jag felt a lot of pressure to represent his community and culture in a positive light. So for him, taking what he considered to be the more honorable route was worth the risk, even if it meant putting his chances at winning in jeopardy. Matt had saved him earlier in the game. Matt had been his de facto number one guy all season long. Matt was his minute man. So he couldn't cut Matt yet. And on a personal level, I can understand this decision. The eviction came a couple hours later, and Jag chose to evict Felicia in fourth place. This means that we're now at the final three. Do I make the smart game move, or do I throw that away and just stay loyal to Matt? I came in to be the first sick on Big Brother and the first sick winner, and every part of me wants to make that happen. Mama Fee, I respect you tremendously as a game player and as a human. Ultimately, I have to do what I believe is right and stay true to who I am. I vote to evict you, Mama Fee. Jag played a really good competitive game, but I don't know that he'll beat Matt in a vote. So he may have just gave, given away his $750,000. Matt, Bowie, Jack. This was it. The final three players. To give you an overview of where these three players stood, here's where it looked like their heads were at coming into the final three. Jag was reassuring Bowie that they were still going to the final two together because they couldn't beat Matt, so it looked like Jag was leaning towards taking Bowie to the end. Bowie wanted to stay true to the final two deal that she made with Jag at the final five, so she was going to take Jag to the end as well. And then there's Matt. Matt had his Minutemen final two alliance with Jag, and given the fact that Matt believed he could beat both Jag and Bowie in the end, he too was going to honor his deal and bring Jag to the final two. This meant that Jag actually entered the final three with both other players wanting to take him to the final two, which is a very impressive feat considering that Jag did have win equity and wasn't just being taken to the end as a goat. Being taken to the end is great, but Jag wanted to win the final HOH so he himself could decide who would sit there next to him. So going into the part one endurance comp, he was gunning for it. Bowie dropped out after about an hour, breaking it down to just Matt and Jag. Just before the three hour mark, Jag was hurting tremendously while Matt looked solid as a rock. So Jag actually made a smart move and asked Matt if they could play rock, paper, scissors to determine the winner. This was probably the only way that Jag was gonna beat Matt in this part. And after some assurance from Jag that they were obviously going to take each other to the end, Matt agreed, which was pretty insane. Unfortunately, Matt did beat Jag and Jag honored the game and dropped out, crowning Matt the winner of part one. Hey Matt, can you walk to this? I don't know if I can do it. <laughs> Matt, I got you. I'm tired of hurting and being in pain. <laughs> Screw it. Let's just do rock, paper, scissors. Oh. 
I know I've seen some people saying this was a bad move for Jag to drop, but I totally disagree. If Jag brought up the idea to do rock, paper, scissors and then didn't drop after losing, it would look extremely suspicious to Matt and it was imperative that Jag looked as loyal as possible to him in case Matt won the final HOH. So, Matt got to move ahead to Part 3, leaving Jag to face off against Bowie in Part 2. The Part 2 competition kicked off, and Jag struggled. Like, really, really badly. He would hit his buzzer over and over, and he would be incorrect every single time. You could see him visibly frustrated, feeling as though his chances were slipping out of his grasp. But after what felt like forever, he finally finished. That was a terrible, terrible performance. I'm just praying for like a miracle to happen. But a miracle came his way. Bowie Jane struggled even harder, finishing with a time of one hour, 30 minutes and two seconds. Whereas Jag finished with a time of one hour, two minutes and 56 seconds, which crowned him the winner of part two and meant that he would face off against Matt in part three. This meant that Jag still had a chance to win the final HOH, evict Matt and beat Bowie Jane in the final two. But Jag started getting second thoughts again. Although he had been telling Bowie that he was going to take her to the end, Jag started indicating that he might actually take Matt. The two boys were constantly reassuring the other one that they were final two no matter what, and Jag even began hinting to Bowie that he wasn't going to take her. From a game perspective, this sounded so bad! It was already a controversial decision to have not taken the shot at Matt at the final four, but if Jag were to not seize a second opportunity to evict him and instead willingly take Matt to the end, knowing that he would probably lose was asinine. But again, I do think it all comes back to Jag wanting to represent the Sikh community in an honorable light, as this was something that was clearly weighing on Jag and extremely important to him, so I can understand it from that aspect. It just seemed like it was going to be a game-losing decision. Finale night quickly approached, and with that, part three began. It was a tight battle between the two boys as they answered identically all the way through, but in a nail-biting tiebreaker, Jag pulled away with the victory, crowning him as the final head of household. The correct answer is 176 minutes. Let's go! Which means congratulations, Jag. Yeah. You are the final head of household. This was it. Jag was guaranteed to make it to the final two, and he just had one decision in front of him. Would he take Bowie Jane to the end for the easier victory, or would he stay loyal to Matt and make it an all Minuteman final two? Jag stood up, made his speech, and he evicted Bowie. Matt, in week four, my back was against the wall, and I truly prayed with everything in my soul for an answer. You answered those prayers. Ultimately, I have to do what I think is right and make the decision that I hope my Sikh community will be proud of. If I sit next to Matt and I lose 6-1, the one thing that I pray is that that one vote is from you, Bowie Jane. I have to take Matt to the final two, and I have to vote to evict you, Bowie Jane. Bro, I told you I got you till the I know, end. I know. I told you. Oh, You're gonna win this whole thing, man. Oh boy. No. Oh boy. So here we are, Jag versus Matt. From a physical standpoint, Jag dominated Matt. He had won 10 competitions throughout the season, which broke a nearly 20-year-old record, and Jag's competition wins helped carry both men into the final two. However, Matt's social and strategic game seemed to be superior over Jag's. Plus. Jag had been evicted from the game already. No previously evicted house guest had ever made it to the final two in the US version before, so we didn't quite know how much of a penalty that would put on Jag, or if he even had a chance to win it all because of it. Based on the jury roundtable and what we were able to grasp from exit interviews, Matt seemed like he had this in the back. Corey left pro Matt. Blue left pro Matt. Sari left pro Matt. Felicia left anti-Jag. That's four players right off the bat, and with a jury of seven, that's all you need. Jag likely had Cameron and Bowie's votes, but from my perspective, Jag went into the final two questions segment in a 5-2 to two deficit, meaning that he had an uphill battle ahead of him. But, to Jag's credit, he did what so many past finalists have failed to do. Owned up to his game. 
In fact, he probably over-owned it, taking credit for moves that he didn't necessarily make and making it sound like he was the leader of his alliance with Matt, and I respect that gall. On the flip side of the coin, Matt seemed to struggle with his questions. He was being very broad and vague with his answers, not really giving the jurors what they wanted to hear, and it definitely didn't help him in securing any votes. Then, when it was time for the final speeches, Jag stood up and gave quite possibly the most point-blank, aggressive speech in the history of Big Brother. He went juror by juror, walking them through how he single-handedly sent each one of them home. Cameron, Corey, Blue, America, Sari, Felicia, and Bowie. He was bathing in the blood of the jurors, and that was because of how dominantly he ran the game from the final nine onwards. Whether or not this was actually true, who knows? But the point is that he was owning it, saying he deserved to win because of the path he carved out for himself. It was a bold decision being so aggressive, but after seeing so many players fail to own up to their game and lose because of it, I have a massive amount of respect for the effort. I am standing where I am standing and you are sitting where you are sitting because I have willed it to be that way. I am the most dominant, masterful, and strategic player in this house. I convinced Bowie Jane to put Cam on the block. I convinced Matt that we needed to send Sari home. I single-handedly sent Corey home. I single-handedly sent Blue home. I single-handedly sent Felicia home. I single-handedly sent Bowie home. My hands are covered in your blood. I signed your eviction notice. You all need to make the right decision today so I can be crowned the first sick winner. It is the right thing to do and I've earned it every step of the way. With that ferocious speech, Jag sat down and his game was officially complete. The power now lied in the hands of the jurors. One by one, the jury members inserted their keys and it finally hit me. Matt did not have this game on lock, and this vote was up in the air. For the first time in years, I did not know who was going to win. When it was time to reveal the votes, it was anybody's game. Bowie Jane voted for Jack. Felicia voted for Matt. Sari voted for Matt. America voted for Jack. Blue voted for Jack. And Corey voted for Jack. Just like that, history was made. Jag Baines was crowned the winner of Big Brother 25 by a vote of five to two. Bowie Jane has cast her vote for Jag. America's vote goes to Jag. Blue has cast her vote also for Jag. Corey's vote goes to Congratulations, Jack! You are the winner of Big Brother 25! Jag had one of the most convoluted games from start to finish that I have ever seen. He started off the game on the right foot, but his game quickly fell apart. He lost his closest ally in week two, and he struggled to recover until he himself was voted out in week four. However, Matt saved him with a power, and just like a phoenix, Jag rose from his own ashes and was born again in the game. Other players made themselves targets, which allowed Jag to skate through a few more weeks before his game changed for, I'm gonna say the better, when he joined the Mafia with Matt and Bowie Jane. These three played the middle of the house up until Jerry began, at which point Jag won practically every single competition, which he tactically used to take out any physical contenders until it came down to just the Mafia. From here, it looked as if Jag made two mind-boggling decisions when he kept Matt at both the final four and the final three, but in retrospect, it didn't actually matter as Jag beat Matt in the end. That meant that, technically speaking, Jag had the game locked down at final three since both Matt and Bowie were taking him to the end and he'd win against either of them. It was a very, very messy game at points, and the beginning of his game definitely left a lot to be desired, but once he got to the final nine, there legitimately wasn't an opportunity to take him out outside of one 30-minute period during the double eviction, but he was able to rely on his allies to win those competitions and keep him safe. Overall, I have a really tough time assessing Jag's game. For a large portion of the season, Jag didn't have any power or control in the house, and the game was simply being played around him. But eventually, he was able to dominate the competitions so severely that there was no stopping him on his way to the final two. Were the competitions favored for someone like Jag over the likes of a Sari? 
Definitely, it would be bad reporting to skip over that. But there is a level of impressiveness in the fact that Jag consistently won every single time, never leaving the door open for a move to be made against him and ensuring that he and his allies would make it to the end together. Yes, Jag was voted out. Yes, Jag played the beginning of the game pretty bad but you don't have to be perfect to win the game. Jag played with the cards he was dealt with, and he found his own road to victory. At the end of the day, all that matters is getting to the final two and getting more jury votes than your opponent. And Jag did just that. In terms of a score, I am going to be fairly critical. Jag was consistently a target throughout the entirety of the season, and although winning so many clutch competitions is impressive, I'm not a big fan of needing to rely on comps in order to stay in the game. On top of that, Jag made incorrect decisions on many occasions throughout the season. Taking Matt to the final three and the final two felt like easily avoidable game-losing moves, and it also seems like a large factor of him even beating Matt in the end was because of how much Cameron was a cheerleader for him in the jury house. And obviously, there's the elephant in the room, that Jag was unanimously voted out in week four. But with all that being said, he does have some good things going for him as well. Jag is one of the best physical competitors we have ever seen on the show. He was sociable enough to the point where house guests continued to want to work with him despite his flaws, and his final five round was exceptional. Overall, I think I'm going to give Jag a 3 out of 10 on the winner scale, but it's just an arbitrary number and it doesn't really mean anything. At the end of the day, I would much rather be a 3 out of 10 winner with $750,000 than a 10 out of 10 loser with nothing to show for it. Like this has been the greatest, greatest experience of my life and I just hope I made my family proud. And you made history. The first sixth winner. And there we go. When looking at the season as a whole, I do think it's important to recognize that Jag winning has a much larger impact than one may think. As the first sick house guest, he was carrying the weight of representing an entire community on his shoulders, and to go out there and win is incredible. Jag spoke many times about how he wanted to represent his community in a positive light, and trying to balance that while also playing a game designed to bring out the worst in you seems like a very tough task. Who cares if he didn't play the greatest strategic game? game. Who cares if he was voted out? It's a television show, and Jag used his platform to represent and inspire all the sick Punjabi viewers that were watching from home, and that's something to be acknowledged and commended. My turban is a really important part of my identity. It's what I hold closest to myself. When I tie it each morning, it's a reminder for me to spread laughter and joy and peace and harmony and also to stand up for what's right in every situation. I love being Punjabi, I love being Sikh, like it's such a big part of who I am. I love to embrace my culture and my religion. I try to be like as open as possible, like that's the only way we learn, right? Thank you so much for watching. This was a very long and difficult video to make, but I'm happy with how it turned out, and I really appreciate you for watching the whole thing. With the longest Big Brother video I have ever made officially in the books, it is time for me to rest. Just kidding. I've already started work on my next winter video. Stay tuned for whenever that may be released. If you're new here and you liked what you saw, consider subscribing. I of course need to give that extra special shout out to all of my YouTube members and patrons who made watching this entire season worth it. And... As always, here's a clip for you on your way out. In the BB house, sometimes you go a little crazy and do weird things. So now me and Jag are texting each other using our mic packs. Are you still in the have not? I hope he texts back. <laughs> Just chilling without me. Look, we don't have our phones in the house, but sometimes I still be texting him, you know? Sometimes we flirt a little. What else are we gonna do in the BB house? <laughs> <laughs> Then, oh, oh, oh. Me and Corey, we're not at that level yet, unfortunately. But, you know, hopefully we'll, we'll start texting soon. Jag, how did your game change for, I'm going to say the better, when you joined the Mafia with Matt and I? Oh. <laughs>